Hello, I'm going to talk to you today about A-level product design at Sir Christopher Hatton Academy. I will explain how the course is assessed, go through the structure of the course, what you can expect in lessons, introduce you to the team, and talk to you about careers linked to the subject as well. We've been delivering the design and technology product design specification at A-level for some years now through AQA, and we've had huge success with lots of our students going on to university um, to study further courses in design and technology and associated careers. So who are the teachers? Well, there's myself, Mr. Lane. I've been teaching A-level um, DT for 10 years now, um, and I've got lots of experience in how the course is structured and the skills and qualities that you need. Mrs. Johnson also teaches A-level product design. She's an experienced resistant materials teacher with a specialism in metalwork. And of course, Mr. O'Toole, our fantastic technician. He's got huge experience and skills, um, and we're always going to consult him for his expertise. So if you have got a natural curiosity about the design and manufacture of products, then A-level product design could be the course for you. If you're interested in how products are made and designed and the thought process behind that, then this could really appeal to you. Obviously, there is lots of opportunities to think creatively and innovatively, right, to produce new design ideas and push the boundaries of design and take risks. You develop your knowledge and understanding of materials, components and manufacturing processes so that you can apply them to design ideas that you've produced. And of course, you develop practical skills to develop prototypes so that you can communicate your ideas with clients and third parties. The exams, as you can see, test all your theory knowledge. And we do um, a theory lesson each week linked to um, each of the exams. So this is an example of an NEA piece that a student did last year. And I thought it was a really good opportunity to just show you the type of thing and the type of work that's produced. So this student um, was developing a design for a table, a picnic table um, for their client because their old one was um, starting to break and wasn't serving the purpose that they wanted it for. So the student looked at it and brainstormed it came up with the problem. He then planned out research, as you can see here, and went on to take measurements, do a site visit. He did a, an interview and asked his client exactly what they wanted and analysed the results. He looked at existing products and inspiration for new products. That was to really test his creativity and of course started to come up with some initial ideas. From his research, he developed a specification. This is a list of things that the product must meet. And as you can see here, he's now starting to develop some design ideas. So he's done drawings, we've got um, work models there. A different idea, again, linked to um, his research with client feedback. Further ideas and development. Which he then evaluates, again, getting client feedback and deciding which one he's going to take forwards. He does development work, looking at materials, properties, etc. He develops a range of working drawings to think about how he's going to manufacture this product. So there's lots of use of CAD involved. He plans out his time and how he's going to make it, thinking about equipment, health and safety, how it's going to be made to a good quality. And then as you can see here, you can see the different tools and equipment that he's going to make and realise his design. As you can see, there's a amount of work in his final prototype piece that he made. Our course requires a lot of commitment to you, both inside of lessons and also through intervention sessions. So, you know, we, there is an expectation that you spend some of your lunch times and some after, after school um, intervention sessions in design and technology in the workshop with tools and materials. Just a bit of an overview, really, as to um, what you could expect in a design portfolio for the NEA section of the course. We structure our lessons, so we do design projects, developing your skills in year 12. 
whether that's in metals, woods or plastics. And of course, there's the theory content as well to make sure that you're thoroughly prepared for the examination. There are many exciting future prospects for um, an A-level in design and technology. So lots of our students go on to um, follow careers into engineering and architecture, um, but other design careers are also followed using um, A-level design and technology. Um, marketing as well, advertising students go into, as well as working with CAD and CAM, 3D prototyping, etc. There's a huge amount of um, opportunity in design and technology, particularly when it's linked with maths and science. So if you are interested in following an A-level in design and technology, then we expect you to have um, a grade six or above in a design and technology subject, and ideally as well, a grade six in math. 15% of the examination comes from maths based questions. If you are interested and want to discuss it a little bit further, then please don't hesitate to contact me via email at the Academy. My email address is lane s at hattonacademy.org.uk. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation and I look forward to seeing you next year.